Hello, my name is Mr. Lee. I'm an instructional designer and teacher at MDLP. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce our navigation system for our lessons. I'm hoping to show you not only how they work, but also how you can use the features to become a more effective learner. Okay, so let's take a look here. This is one of my favorite topics, fractions, specifically adding fractions. And so you can see the learning goals in the beginning. Click the next arrow. And then there's a big picture video. Now this video is just a few minutes in length and it's just an overview of the topics in the lesson. It should be really helpful in terms of getting your mindset about what you're trying to learn in this lesson. Now this isn't the only thing you should do in the lesson. In other words, this doesn't cover all the content, just some major points. So you definitely want to study the entire lesson. Don't just do this video and then call it good. Next is the main menu. Notice that in many lessons, the topics are broken down into subtopics. In this case, common denominators, mentally estimating, and unitizing fractions. Each topic is aligned. So you can see there's an icon for the textbook. That's kind of like the math book version of the content. Then there are instructional videos for the video icon. And then the questions related to that topic are also aligned up in the same spot. So let's take a look at the textbook content for common denominators. In this case, there's an introductory challenge about cake. So when you're going through the textbook content, you want to make sure you're taking notes on both the paragraphs and any visuals and worked out examples. The paragraphs contain information that are the why of learning. It's the definitions, why things work a certain way, how processes work. You want to get all that detail in your notes. And each content slide also has an audio narration that was recorded by an MDLP math teacher. And it will not only read the text to you on the page, but it will explain any visual model or worked out example. Definitely take notes on all that. And so here I have reached my end point of this loop. In other words, there's no next arrow. So what I can do is I can hit the home button. That'll take me back to the main menu. Now I'm going to look at the video portion of the common denominators. And there's a video about adding fractions of the same denominator and it includes a visual model. So I'd want to watch this video. A quick comment about the videos. The videos are math videos. It's not, say, as riveting as skateboard jumping or, you know, whatever you're into for your YouTube videos. But there are a lot of key points in the videos. So you definitely want to pay attention to every single moment of the videos. Don't put on a video and then play with your phone while you're listening to the video. You really want to pay attention here. And also, take notes. So here's a video adding with different denominators. And here's another video adding by finding the lowest common denominator. And this is also the end of my loop. There's no next arrow. So when I'm done with this video, I can press the home button to go back to the main menu. Now I'm going to look at my lesson questions. Oh, it says all work from the previous checkpoints must be submitted and graded before you can complete these questions. Click to continue. Now if I'm having a checkpoint issue, I'm waiting for something to be submitted or graded. So I need to look at my portfolio and see what's going on. If I need to submit something, I'll need to go ahead and take care of that. If I'm waiting for something to be graded, notice that I can still view the other parts of the lessons. So I can still view the textbook type information, I can still watch all the videos, I can take notes, and I can do this for any lesson in the course. So I can still be working ahead, but I just can't do the lesson questions just yet. Oh, and by the way, this icon over here for the brain, that takes you to the big picture video. So now I have my checkpoint resolved, so let's do the lesson questions. Okay, adding the fractions by finding the LCD. 3 sevenths plus 2 sevenths is 5 sevenths. So I'm going to submit. Then click to continue. Notice there is a skip button, so if I want to skip a question for now, I can do that. But all questions do need to be answered before I can submit the lesson. Also notice there's a home icon here. Now if I'm in the middle of answering these questions and I want to look up something in the lesson, I can do that. So let's say I wanted to view the LCD video again. I would click on the main menu button or the home. Then I'm going to go to that video. Okay, and then I can watch this video and get the information I need. Then click on the lesson questions button again. And then this question is answered, so I'm going to skip to the next one. And then I can go ahead and answer the question. Okay, now let's say I'm not sure about an answer, so I'm going to submit it. It says try again. Well, right now, I have a decision to make. 
I could try to answer it again here, or I could go back to the lesson to gain more information so I can try the question again. So you can still press the main menu here or the home button, and then that'll take you back and you can look up the information you need. And once you finish one section, you want to go ahead and continue and complete any other sections within the lesson. So when all the questions are answered, a submit button will appear here in the lower right hand corner and then I will press it and then it will show me the results of my lesson questions and it will also be sent to my portfolio to record that value. Now, if I get a low score here, I don't want to just move on to the next lesson because I'm stressed out and behind. If I'm not learning this lesson content, I'm not going to be ready for the performance tasks later in the course, and that's going to be a problem. So I can review the content again, or I can send a message to my teacher in the message box if I'm confused. Those are both strategies that will work well. Also, make sure you're taking notes on the content. Brain research shows that the most effective way for you to learn content is to write it down. And I'm not talking about typing notes on the computer or doing screen captures. I'm talking about writing down the notes on paper. It will help you. So I hope all this information has been helpful, and I hope you enjoy your MDLP course.